Friends, welcome to our channel. Today is an important topic, something that we all have to think about, and that is bugging out versus bugging in versus moving out, and which one is far superior to the others. Let's talk about it. Today I'm gonna to talk about 10 reasons and maybe a few bonus reasons why you should never bug out of your secure location. And also I'm gonna talk about four reasons why you should bug out of a location. Let's sit down and talk about this a little more. Friends, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna talk more about why you need to move out of the cities to secure your place of refuge out away from any suburbs or cities at all. And we'll also talk about it from a Christian perspective and one aspect that will blow your mind. Okay, the very first thing you need to do is intelligently analyze your situation and the needs of you and your family because that's gonna determine a lot about what you do. Whether it's to stay or leave, regardless of which one, it is crucial in both cases to have a well thought out plan in place. But of course, you cannot plan for everything. So being mentally prepared to be adaptable in any situation is also very important. So before I even give you those 10 reasons, I'm gonna say that in my opinion, there is hardly ever a time where you should bug out from a secure location like your home. Now, all situations have nuance to them. I understand that. But honestly, there are very few reasons to leave. Bugging in should always be your default option. Very briefly, a little history on the term bugging out. The best guess is that it's traced back from a military term back from World War II. And all it means is leaving the vicinity of a current threat for a more secure location. It's not some idea that you are going to leave a post-apocalyptic event in a city and just wander around and live off the land in the woods for the rest of your life. That's foolish. All right, now let's dive into those 10 reasons why you do not want to bug out. And number one is exposure to the elements. Look, shelter is one of the key things that you need to think about in any situation. I don't care what it is. You have your home, you have a roof over your head. It's more than likely climate controlled. And if you are in the middle of the woods, say camping, you know you need shelter to be able to do that. Because hypothermia and exposure to the elements is really serious and it can degrade your body really fast and kill you really fast. Number two, if you leave and bug out of a location, you can only carry very limited supplies on your person. No matter how big the bag is, you're not going to make it for very long with what you bring with you. Now you can bring tools with you to help prolong that period of time, but bugging out of a location is not meant to be a permanent thing. Number three, if you bug out of a location and you run into authority figures, I'll just term it like that, that could be dangerous for you. We can think of a situation on a bridge after Hurricane Katrina where some citizens were murdered by some authority figures and they were innocent and I don't think anything was ever done about that. So be very careful. Number four, you do not perform well in very stressful situations. Have you ever been very hungry? Have you ever been very tired? How do you perform in those situations if you're outside walking around? Have you ever been lost before camping? Have you ever gone on a hike and gotten lost? How do you perform in those situations? Most people don't do very well. The fifth reason to not bug out and that is your friends and family who are going with you don't have the same skill set as you do. And that's very hard if you have small children and you need to leave a place and you need to fend for yourself for some reason, you are the one who is supporting them and that could put an undue amount of stress on you. However, that's possible, but hopefully the rest of your crew has some skill to be able to help you out. Number six, lack of planning. Like I said before, it's crucial you have a plan in place whether you bug in or bug out. Bugging out, where are you gonna go? How long are you gonna stay? What direction are you gonna go? Do you know what direction another threat is in? You don't know. So 
you have to have a plan for multiple situations. And most people don't have a solid plan. Number seven, medical care, medical supplies, medical skills. If you or one of your party gets injured or sick during this process of leaving a place, what are you gonna do? Do you have the skills, which most people don't, to be able to care for yourself and get you further along the way. Number eight, and I talk about this all the time in my videos, and that is everybody is out of shape, including myself. Now, I do pretty well here and try to keep in shape the best that I can, but can I be stronger? Can I have a more fit cardiovascular system? Yes, absolutely. But most people, most people are not in shape to leave and walk for miles upon miles upon miles. Number nine, if you're bugging out of one place, you're going to a more secure location somewhere else. Where is that location? And did you choose the right location? Can you get to that location? That's incredibly difficult to do. And if you chose the wrong location in a place that also has the same threat going on, then you got an issue because you don't have a place to go. Number 10, Water, water, water. Water is heavy and you can't take much with you. Do you know how to find water? Most people don't. Do you know how to filter water? You're going to need to because most water out there is dirty. That is a serious problem because you cannot last very long without water. And if you're walking long distances, especially if it's hot and you need to bug out, then you've got a serious issue. Okay, here's a bonus one, number 11, and that's security. And that's not only your own personal security and the security of your group that you're leaving with, whether that's your family or family and friends, but how do other people perceive you? Do other people perceive you as a security threat? And can you protect yourself or your family if you're leaving and going through another area of threat to get to a secure or more secure location. Now I'm gonna talk about the four reasons or situations where you need to leave your place of refuge. And of course, number one on the list is environmental threats or weather. Obviously, tornadoes and hurricanes. Get out of the path and get out quickly. I had a friend who lived in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and he was not going to leave when Hurricane Ivan was coming up there. Somebody finally convinced him to go, packed up the dog and left, drove north. Lucky he did. He had about four feet of water in his house. There were dead sharks and alligators all over the streets when he got back. His house was half destroyed and those poor people during Hurricane Katrina, many couldn't leave. And that's a big reason to not live in the city. Many could not leave. And I did architecture work down along the Gulf Coast in 2006 and 2007 after Hurricane Katrina to try and rebuild that area. I know how devastating it was. You can go on from there, but volcanoes, get out of the way of the lava. You're gonna have to leave your possessions in your house. You have to leave during floods. You've gotta leave during all of these things. You need to have a place to go and something with you. I'm not advocating for a bug out bag to stage by the door all the time. You're gonna live off the land for three days. No, just have something. Maybe it's got some money in it. Maybe it has a change of clothes. Each one of the family has something small. Maybe it's got some snacks in it and certainly some water. Maybe a few other things to help you along the way like some cordage or you know something else, maybe a water filter. Though that's not necessary because usually to get out the, the path of those types of environmental disasters, you can get in your vehicle and go. Make sure your vehicle is always full, always full of gas and make sure your path isn't through the center of the city where you're gonna be sitting there for a long period of time. Okay, let's talk about the second one and it kind of splits into two, second and third. And that is one, a growing human threat. So as we saw several years ago, riots, riots in our cities. And those overwhelmed people in certain areas. They took out people's businesses. Some of those businesses people lived at, they were burned to the ground. Obviously you're gonna leave in that situation when there's a growing angry human threat that's just milling about. 
Similar to that is a growing force of people. And that is people coming out to a certain location or going to a certain location in force to do damage, to specifically and intentionally do damage to that area. And it could be a neighborhood, it could be a business, it could be where you're at. So you need to monitor that and leave. And the fourth reason is kind of odd and it relates back to the other 10 reasons to not bug out. And that is because you are unprepared at your place of refuge. You have done nothing to make it a secure place in terms of food and water first and the shelter. And you really need to think about that ahead of time. Of course, like I said, planning is so crucial. That's why my friends, bugging in is far superior in most situations to leaving your place of refuge. You have everything there, or you should have everything there. Most people have probably about two weeks of food in their house. You should have more. Most people have running water in, in a bad situation that might get interrupted depending on your water system. Have water that you can use stored up. Moreover, bugging in is psychologically way better because you have the comfort of your own home. You know the lay of the land. You know what you have. You know what you've done to prepare, maybe in the tiniest bit, for any bad situation that's gonna happen. You are comfortable there and you have the things you need, at least for the short term. And also with bugging in, you have the opportunity over a long period of time to foster community in your place with your neighbors. Maybe and hopefully everybody will be kind of on the same page and you will look out for one another and take care of one another. Be careful though, because this can be a challenge. If you are not on the same page about every aspect of your life, you know, human nature is human nature, unfortunately, it's sinful nature. And if something bad happens in some person that you've been friends with for a long time, a neighbor, they decide to change their mind and they want all your food, well, you got an issue there. How well do you know the people who you've surrounded yourself with? So here's the big point. Some of these, potentially all of these issues that you're gonna run in with bugging in, bugging out, are alleviated by moving out of the cities and doing it now. You hear me in all of my videos say this, and I know some of you have done that, and I am so excited and happy for you. Because friends, the majority of the problems are going to be centered in the cities. And I've said it before, grocery stores only have about a three-day supply of food in the stores normally. In a disaster situation, they have about three hours of food. And that is a very scary thing if you are not prepared. During the riots in Minneapolis and other cities, food trucks were stopped. They were not allowed to come into those areas, either by the people that were there or by their companies because it was dangerous. So the food is not getting delivered. Friends, the things that we saw in the cities, in terms of the riots in Minneapolis and other cities, even Washington DC, most major cities, and also the establishment of things like, I think it was called CHAZ, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle. The people who lived in that neighborhood who were not part of that riot were caught up in it. And many of them were assaulted and threatened by these people who took over the area and the cops backed off. So that is something to keep in mind. Cities are incredibly dangerous when you get a mob mentality for something that's either legitimate or not in terms of whatever they're protesting against. When you get that many people together, it's incredibly dangerous and it can harm innocent people and it does. So move out and do it now. Friends, when you move out of the city, you have the ability to grow your own food and to establish a sustainable place of refuge. And you need to build it up over time. So it's going to take a little bit of time to do that, depending on your finances. When we moved here, like I said, if you heard me in other videos, I had $50 extra per month. So don't think you can't do it. I barely had any money at all. 
Growing and raising your own food is very important, but what's even more important is relying on God to help you in your endeavor, out in His creation, out in nature. God can do anything, and He can absolutely help you if you're in the city. However, I believe that He has told us ahead of time, through His Word, to leave the cities, especially if you are working for Him in spreading the gospel. And that is certainly the case with John the Baptist. He lived a simple life out in the countryside. The same with Elijah. He lived away from the city. God took him even further out into the wilderness when Ahab was looking for him. Noah was even away from the cities initially, and that's where he built the ark, was away from all of the insanity. Who created the first city? It was Cain, the first murderer. So, all of the cities and the vice and the sinfulness was concentrated in those cities, even from the start of our world. And I believe if you read through scripture enough, you'll see that Jesus never dwelled in the city, especially during his ministry. He was always staying outside of the city, in a garden somewhere. He went into the city to minister and heal people, but he retired back out of the cities. So the countryside is the ultimate bug out location and bug in location. It is where we should be all the time, raising food for our family and communing with God out here. Now I know some will say that violent hands will come and take what I have. And yes, that might be the case. And you know what? I'm prepared for that. And I'm prepared for that in a way that might be different from you. I am relying solely on my Creator God, who can do anything. He brought me out here. He's the one who impressed upon me through the Holy Spirit to leave my career and come out here with my family. And if someone comes and takes our place and takes all of our stuff, that is a test of faith for me. I know that all good things are from God and He wants the best for me and He even takes care of the birds, the Bible says. So, that'll be an extreme test for me and for my family. But again, can we take anything to heaven with us? No, so we'll have to give up all earthly things anyway. Don't be like Lot's wife. Her heart longed for the city and her stuff that was back in the city. Don't turn around and become a pillar of salt. Ultimately too, friends, in the last days, the Bible teaches that we're, there will be a small remnant of God's church. A remnant is a small piece that looks exactly like the original. The original followers of Jesus. Revelation 12, 17 says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. And we know from Bible prophecy, a woman represents a church in prophetic talk. And the dragon, of course, is Satan. And it says, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Well, the seed is Jesus. Her is the church. And the remnant is the small portion of people who look like the original. I'll reiterate it again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You can relate also Revelation 4, 12 to that. It says, here's the patience of the saints, here that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, not in of Jesus. And that remnant, friend, will be led by God's angels. They will be led away from their homes in the very last days. They will turn, say goodbye to all the stuff that God has thankfully provided for us at this point. They will turn and follow those angels and be protected by them. They will keep them from harm and they will go to the ultimate bug out location, heaven. I hope this helps, friends. Have a blessed day. And if you have any questions, please leave them for me below. We'll talk to you later.